Welcome everyone. I want to do a video show you guys today on a mod that I use in all of my all of my machines and it's going to be the Nevermore V6 Duo. All of my machines previously had the V5 Duo. The V6 is out now. I'm going to show you how to put it together. A lot of people are having problems with the slider part. So I will show you how to assemble it and how to make this thing work. Put it together properly, okay? It's a great mod for your printer if you have an enclosed printer. It will definitely get your chamber temperature up a lot quicker than it would without it. So it does help bring the heat out from underneath the plate, blow it around. And it's also got the spot in here to put carbon, which if you print any ABS, you know what I'm talking about. It stinks, so there's no way I could print all this ABS in here without some sort of filtration. This works really good. So let's get right into it. I'm going to show you where to get the files from. We're going to download them, slice them, print them, pull them off the plate slide them on the table over there and I'll show you guys how to assemble everything and put it together. Let's do it. Okay, so this is the Nevermore Micro GitHub page. You're gonna wanna come here and I will link this in the description for your files. So I, we're, we're working on the V6 today. I'm gonna show you how it all works. We're not gonna go over the V5 Duo or the V4 or any other ones. If you wanna scroll down through here and read about it a little bit, it's great. It's got some very good information in here about it. You can do that. So we're going to go to V6. If you've just got a basic standard setup, you're just going to go to STL. You're going to download the files in here. You can see here they have an A in front of these three. These, if you want, you can use these as your accent parts to print them in a different color. That's up to you. Also, if you have, I think, a different kind of fan done on Honey Badger. So that's going to be Fabrico's fan. If you use one of those, you're gonna to wanna to use the files in here for the plenum. So just basic standard setup, go through here, download all these files. Here are the files that we just downloaded from the Nevermore GitHub. Looking at these, you can see right here, we have two of the same files. They're not, I'm sorry, they're not the same. They look the same. If you look at the top up here in the file name, one says 90 degree, one says straight, Looking at that, I'll show you. Here's where the air comes out to these holes. This is the straight one. And here you can see the holes are in 90 degree. They're in the top. So deciding there which one you want, you print that. I use the 90 degree one for my machines. Basically on mine, I have a door that comes right up against this area. You're not gonna get good airflow coming out of there. So I'm gonna delete that off. Other than that, you can also see the A here again. It shows this one can be printed accent. And that's something if you want to do that, you can do that. Or you can do it a totally different way. Whatever looks good to you. If you print that accent, great. This is the slider piece. I'll show you the support pieces. If you look here, this here is a support. So is this. This little triangle piece here and here. Those are both supports. And this part has these two clips with it. Those are clips that hold the fan in place. So you need that on this piece, this whole entire area right here will be pulled off. That's a built-in support as well. So it's very nice. You don't have to add supports or worry about adding supports with this project, which supports can sometimes be a real pain. This piece is gonna slide in here, place of that. It's gonna be a little slider door thing to keep it closed. It's gonna go in the back area right here it's going to come up and slide through here. That's what the notches are about so it can bend. A lot of people are having problems with printing this thing in multiple ways. So if you have any issues with it, you can add a brim to print, to print this. That's the problem. The other thing is you do need to make sure your printer's pretty well tuned to print these things and to be able to bend them and them not break on you. So I will show you. And if you have any questions, you can ask me. I'm going to put some links in the description for you. So we're going to go over to the table once these are printed and show you how it goes. Okay, now just yank these supports off. I'm going to show you how to just pull this one off. Just set to the side. I usually take something sharp, like X-Acto knife or something, or you can use a little knife and these little side cut things and just cut off any, any little parts that stick out. Use the X-Acto knife to cut them off a little bit and then use it down in the edges to clean out your little channel that your 
your little slide goes in and out of. It makes it slide a little better. And we got some more supports here. Pop these two little half moon looking guys off. Got the little triangle pieces here. Break them two off. Snap them off real easily there. And then the same deal. Just clean them up a little bit. Get a knife or whatever you got. Clean it up. And another little support here. I actually didn't show this in the slicer footage, but there's a little small piece there that's got to be cut off and a little piece at the very top. This little thing got on my nerves, which was my fault since I forgot it and tried to slide the lid on without cutting it off. And just clean it up around the edges real good. Make it look real nice to your liking. Now, I like to break out my heat gun for this. Go through, heat it up a little bit. Get all that white gunk looking crap off there. Make it look real pretty and nice. I tried to speed this up a little bit so I wouldn't torture you guys with too much of me hassling, fiddling with this thing. It was kind of a pain to get in there. Use this little clip to lock your fan in place. One side's small right here. Just put it on the proper side. You'll see that one side can go down farther, the other one cannot. Put it in there and fight with it and fight with it and fight with it until you get it in. You just want to pry back on it a little bit with something. I ended up using my needle nose here. I end up using those to pry back on the front here you'll see and finally get it in place. The, the other one went a lot easier than this one. Either way it's kind of a pain or it has been for me and I've made multiple of these. Okay, time to get ready to do some wiring. Trim them down to length. These are going to be cut a little bit shorter anyways. Flatten them out as much as you can because it is kind of tricky to get that lid on. So just try to keep your wires from twisting around and around because they are flat wires. So just do that. And cut them to length again. I use my X-Acto just to slide down through here and also to strip them. If you got a stripper or something for this, it's obviously going to be a little bit better, but I've just been doing this like this for so long, I'm hard-headed. So twist them up together, strip them a little bit longer and twist them up together because I'm going to cut them shorter. It seems to hold it together when I'm getting ready to solder this, so you'll see. And now we can do some soldering here. And ladies and gentlemen, do not forget your shrink on here. Because that stinks when you do that. This helping hands thing is very nice for soldering. If you don't have one, I mean, you can get by without it, but it is very handy. And there actually are some printable files out there that you can use to print these and help you with bringing two things together like this. After you get done heat shrinking it, just going to jam that thing in there, push it in there real good. Put it up against something flat and get it in there. Typically here, I have to, since it's been hot, you're going to have to take some needle nose or something and bend these pins back in a place, like right where they need to be. Don't bend too hard. And I like to test fit these just to make sure everything's going to fit there okay. Just grab a JST connector and plug it in. Of course, I forgot to put the heat insert in. So just get, get your heat insert here and pop it in there, heat it up, and there you go. So I like to take a red paint marker and a black paint marker so you can mark your positive and negative here. Just pop the door in place here, just push it up towards the front and snap it in place. Then you've got one screw here you put in, M3 bolt. These are kind of loose, so you definitely want to use super glue in these. Pop some super glue in. Make sure you get your polarity correct on your M3 3x6 magnets here because you're going to be mad if you don't. Ask me how I know. Now that we got it together, it looks pretty. Let's go ahead and get that slider put in. 
So yeah, this thing can be a real booger to get in. So I like to heat it up a little bit with a heat gun. You can see how it goes in. If you take something flat and push up against it here to get your kind of little bend at the beginning and heat it up a little bit, it should go in a lot easier. Just getting that past that first point is what you're trying to battle. Once you get it in, just slide it in place. I like to go over the whole thing a little bit with the, some heat from my heat gun just to get it all looking pretty and make sure everything's in place well. I cut me a little wire here so I can do a bench test to verify this thing works before I put it on the machine. Let's hook it up and see what we got. And there she spins. Yeah, as you can tell, I've already got this thing full of, full of carbon. So here you need an M3x16 for this. It's going to screw right in that channel right there. If I turn my bed heater lower than the temperature it is, there it goes and it kicks on and we are working. So that's how we do it. I have mine set to where when I turn the bed heater on, it activates the fan. So it shows the temperature is about 28 degrees. If I turn it lower than that, it will automatically activate. So now it's blowing out the top. And that's how it's done, ladies and gentlemen. All right, thank you guys so much for watching the video. If you have any questions, put them in the comments section for me. And I promise you that I will get better at this editing. Thank you. See you next time.